The following program is a project of the students of Mofo's Training for Television and Film, a project of the Mohammed Amin Foundation, supported in part by a grant from Open Society Initiative for East Africa. The views expressed in this program are not necessarily the views of the Mohammed Amin Foundation or Open Society Initiative for East Africa. Zamani haki zetu hatukujua Umepikia wakati wako nami kuchukua hatua Haki na ukweli tumekuwa tukilia Waze kwa vijana chukua Tonight. That's true, that's true. Wow, that's true. good evening viewers. I'm Anne Mitaru Mumina. And I'm Jimmy Garth. Welcome to the Atua Show. Now this show is about being aware, taking responsibility, and last but not least, taking action to create positive change in society. Atua is about you and me, and the role you and I can play in creating a better future for this country. That's absolutely right, Jimmy. Today's show is about something that neither of us can do without water. The numbers tell it all. Listen to this, 50% of the country's rural population does not have access to safe drinking water, but a healthy 74% of the country's urban population has access to, to, to water. Can we, as a nation, allow this to go on any longer? Well, stay tuned to our tour and find out as we delve into these issues that have plagued our country for so long. Stay, stay with us. Welcome back. Today we are talking about water, or rather the lack of it in our country. Certain areas of our country have been neg neglected acutely when it comes to basic infrastructure. The semi-arid and arid areas in Kenya usually lag behind when it comes to development. How can we end this inequality in our nation? Those are the questions we're asking today. Let's watch the feature on water crisis that we have in arid and semi-arid areas before we start looking for answers to the many questions we have. Welcome. When I came, I, I saw people dying. I came in 1983 when there was just at the edge of the biggest drought ever. Na hapa mvua ni mara mbili kwa mwaka. Hapo katikati huwa tuna ukame. Nao mifugo walikuwa wanapata tabu sana kutoka hapa mpaka huko jua ni kali wakitoka huko wakirudi huko nyumbani wamedhoofika kabisa kwa sababu ya safari na jua kali. People lost virtually everything. This become that destitute people who have been proud yesterday become destitute today. When I was in Dadaab, people used to walk around uh, uh, 50 kilometers away searching for water. Ilifikia kiwango ikawa hata mgeni kama ukija kwangu ukiniomba maji 
hata ninatamani kukuambia usitaje maji kwa sababu watoto wangu hapa wamelala kwa kukosa kunywa maji. Kwa hivyo nilikuwa niko tayari nikupatie maziwa kuliko nikupatie maji kwa vile kulikuwa kuna shida ya maji. We are not talking necessarily only about people we talk about their livestock you cannot in the dry season track animals over 30 kilometers to the water they drink water and then you track them back so you don't give them enough time to to graze to uh, to feel the the energy lost. Ninaweza kusema tulikuwa tunaishi kama ambao the recognition that uh, once when people are very very highly scattered it isn't possible to provide them with a lot of services is a is a challenge that we have to deal with kama wakati maji iko imetoboka kwa hiyo nini mtu tuko tunaenda kama usiku kitu za 9 hivi kwenda kuitafuta na unarudi kitu za 3 in my home area is about 50 km they even spend uh, days and days uh, just in the bushes to get water district development committee in the district every district has this and there you put your ideas on the table and listen what the others are saying with a half a million shillings or even 600,000 shillings you can build a sand dam most boreholes will cost more than a million shillings to build unless it is a shallow borehole If I could, I could just do bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. I don't think it's expensive and the government can even help. You see, and when people are talking about boreholes, maybe boreholes are not the most ideal thing. We talk about dams. However, they are temporary. They don't have water all the time. A borehole takes water from up, up to about 300 meters in some cases, uh, whereas the sand dam holds the water on the surface. We must catch water as much water as possible. One source nobody has ever tried it is when the rivers are when it's raining. The rivers are sometimes completely full. Why do we not make meander firm like canals, maybe 200, 300, 400 meters away from the river and fill, and fill systems? One of the concepts that uh, we are working with very closely in partnership with various partners, including with KREP and, uh, and other organizations and the Water Services Trust Fund, is to abstract water from the major pipeline and put it into a tank uh, that then is connected to a series of kiosks at every village. And the community gets it at a bulk rate and they're able to sell it from within their own area by a little group of women, for example, that is formed specifically to manage that kiosk. Watu angalie kupitia pande ya maji huko kwetu interior. Aini haso ambao watu ambao tuko hapa ndani ndani. At least tuwe hatuwezi kwenda kilomita ndefu. We have to talk things over, we must make a plan, we must follow the plan and write the plan off and look for the funds. Everything costs money. We have enough schools and enough communities and enough chiefs camps uh, to put uh, water services. If there is a drought today, you act, you do emergency feeding and then you put these medium long term strategies in place. We must keep uh, the nomadic lifestyle of the people alive. People in a particular area can form themselves into a group and take care of their river and they are recognized and supported by the government. Water is nowhere free in the world. You pay revenue. And uh, you and I know that uh, there is nowhere in the world where governments are very good at uh, doing a lot more than provision of policy and an enabling environment. The government cannot do it alone. That's impossible. The community must be the triforce, whatever you do. And to achieve this, that is an uphill task, I can assure you. Hi, welcome back. You know, I'm saddened by the fact that there's some people in this country that I live in, this country that is about 43 years old, cannot access the same drinking water that I do. Ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, invite the perhaps a face of our topic today, Mr. Fahad Ibrahim from Garissa and Mandela. Fahad, karibu sana. Welcome. Thank you. How are you? I'm very fine. Okay, tell us about yourself. 
um, what you do right now and tell us about a little bit about the area you come from. I'm called the Fahad Ibrahim. I come from Mandara district. You must but speak a bit louder, sorry. I come from Mandara district, but I've also stayed in Garissa. And uh, now I'm a student in Nairobi University. I'm doing Bachelor of Arts in Political Science and Sociology. Yes. A future member of parliament <laughs> sitting with us, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fahad, let me ask you, um, uh, in as far as access to water in Garissa and Mandera, what is that like? Are you as privileged as, and let me use the word privilege, and I know it's one of those very painful words, and especially when you're talking about things that as an independent country everyone should have. Is it that, is it, is, is it that um, accessible to you in Garissa and Mandera as it is for us in the urban towns? No, of course it's not accessible. Actually, it's uh, luxury. In, for example, in Mandera, I come from a place called Ramo. Okay. Uh, the river is seasonal. It's uh, very far from mm -hmm. man, uh, our, the people right. where they live. Mm -hmm. Is it the only source of water in the area? Yeah. Or are there, there are no other boreholes sources? in Ramo. Okay. Yeah, because the water table is very low and it's very expensive, I think, to dig a bore. But they have pumps and mm -hmm. engines uh, along the river mm -hmm. which pumps water to the households. Uh -huh. there, but there are few, very few houses which have taps and they pay around 400 to 600. Can, can, I ask, can I ask what kind of houses these are? Are these privileged people or is this people who can afford to tap water from the rivers? I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, it should be accessible to everyone. To everyone. And you're saying a few houses have this, this privilege. Um, Does everyone have access to this water? No, not everybody. They live in those huts. Exactly. This Ramo location is very far from. It, there are two divisions in Mandera. Right. right. Eloak and Ramo. That's right. Yeah, it's, it's uh, very far. And these guys mm -hmm. uh, can. The water is run by community elders. I see what they're the one who. They're not mm -hmm. representative mm -hmm. from water ministry. Um, there. We saw in the future that in many areas there are people who live a pastoralist way of life. And there are many, many times, maybe all their life, they have to walk over 30 to 50 kilometers with their herds to get water and walk, say, back to where the other members of the group are. What, what do you think can be the answer to this? I believe there are a lot of pastoralists in Mandara, that's right. Yeah. Are these common problems that people in Mandara face? And what do you think can be some of the solutions to those problems? I think right now what they are doing they're, they're using the CDF money to buy big ah, pumps and engines nice. to okay. pump more water. Mm -hmm. Because the pumps are very weak. They, are, they, were, in, they were installed d during the colonial era. <laughs> Therefore, 43 years ago? Yeah. Ah. They pump the water into a tank, into a reservoir. What, how do they conserve and manage the water from the river? The water is pumped from the river into a reservoir uh, near the river. Mm -hmm. And then it's put in a big tank, which is chlorinated. Exactly and then taken to I see what you mean. Pipe, pipe through the house. Two questions for you. Um, one is, and, and I'm talking to you as a young person, <clears throat> you're doing political science, so my assumption would be, Yakobo Tokwa, Tokwa Mbunge, Skumoja, representing either Mandera or Garissa. Or you will be a leader. One day, it will happen. It's possible. Um, obviously, they, not everyone in Garissa and Mandera have access to water, obviously. And, and we, we, we appreciate the fact that some CDF money is being used to make this, you know, um, a thing of the past. As a young person, where we come up, Jamambaya, Unaka, Garissa, Mumuto, Garissa, and Mandera, what have you done, Queen Shua, Wale, Watombaya, Wana, Mchagua, Mbunge, Inge, Katika Parliament? What are you, as a young person, what have you done as an initiative to tell people, you see, this is the reason why we need to bring people who are able to remove us from this doldrum to a greener pastures? You as Fahad, that's one question. If you answer that one, I'll ask you the next one. Okay. And now we have to join Wavijana Wengi. Mm -hmm. We have a group. Good. And we have written what we want uh, the MPs to do. <laughs> and uh, for, for now, he has, he has uh, allocated some amount of money to, to the uh -huh. water problem. Exactly. And they are now. They have so, both so, you guys, you, so you guys question your member of parliament. You don't just say me to tafanya him and say, that's good. Lastly, you know when I go to, to Mashambani, when I go to my rural area, um, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good thing. It's a ceremony. You know what I mean? When you go to Geshagi, Easter, December, 
because I know there there's food, there's water. Is, is, it, is it like that for you? Do you look forward to going home knowing that, you know, in some instances you may have that water, you may have something to look forward to. Do you look forward to going home? And if so, why? And I'm talking specifically about privileges. Can I call them that, Anne? Like what? I think that's an unfair question. It's not. It's not an unfair question. No, think about it. Think about it. Some people look forward to going back to their rural homes because they have access to a lot of things that is supposed to be given to us. And, and I, when I was born, I was I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be given somewhere to lay my you know to some, a roof over my head. Okay, I am supposed to have access to water. If I do not have that access in an independent country, isn't that think. isn't that a problem? I'm yeah. <laughs> No, my, why, why I'm saying it's an unfair question is because you're saying when he goes back home. The question is, what about the people who live there, who constantly have nowhere else to go but live there and still perpetually never have that water? We'll be right back. Host wardrobe courtesy of True Words. For the fashion forward man and woman, shop at True Words, only at the Sarit Center. True Words, for the love of fashion. That sucks, feels like water, man, thanks. <laughs> Welcome back. Our topic is water. You know one thing that irritates me? I guess, I guess a lot of things irritate me. You forgive me for that. I'm just, you know, a patriot, so to speak. 43 years after independence, uh, we still have people who walk 50 kilometers to get water. It's, um, it's unacceptable. I may be a layman, and we have a lot of professionals who help us discuss this topic, but it just disturbs me that there are some instances or some things that 43 years later we cannot access them. And my question is, is it, is it our job as a people, like we saw in the feature, that you know, the people need to help the, the government to access water or stuff like that? Is it us who must go and dig these boreholes? Or is it the government? Before we go into that, yeah. he had one question to answer. Mm -hmm. um, do you look forward to going back home? What's it like back home? Yeah, of course, I usually go back during the holidays. That's yeah. my home because my parents are there and I was born there. But, and, and to add on that, you cannot escape from any problem. You don't run from problems, but you solve them. But can you say that again? You do not? Run away from problems, but you solve them. You have to take control. It's about taking control. Maybe let's, let's throw this to you, our lovely audience. I see a hand way at the back before we introduce our guest. Yeah. Tell us your name. Let the mic come to you. Tell us your name and your quick um, I'm Daniel. Yes, Daniel. Uh, now I'm concerned. Uh, Fahad, uh, can you please tell us how you use your water? Maybe uh, how much you get per day and how much you use per that day? I mean, so that at least we get a picture of really how, how you use your water. In Garissa and Mandera? Yeah, in, in, your, in your home actually. Good stuff. Good question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, from where I come in Ramo, the, the water, they supply water once after every eight days. <laughs> What? Yeah, once after every... Day. Okay, go on. And uh, those who cannot uh, pay for that water, that's 400 to 600 a month, usually go to the river, which is seasonal. It's called River Dawa. They go there, which is, it is very far, like 30 kilometers from... Every the, day? Yeah. Every day? Yeah. Most of the... It's the women who do that job and children. They don't go to school. That's why people from Odessa, it is the men who mostly who are schooled. 43 years later, we are joined now by um, uh, the Director of the Water Services, Ministry of Water and Irrigation, Mr. Gakubia. Welcome. Engineer. Engineer Gakubia. Engineer, um, now you must understand one thing. Uh, Engineer Gakubia is, is, is very passionate about his work, and I appreciate that, sir. But you understand our concern. I mean, listen to that. They get water after every eight days. Um, uh, we are 43 year old, years old as a country. I'm just wondering, have we not cracked it yet that we have instances in parts of our country where people can still not be able to access that water 43 years later after independence? I'm just concerned, sir. Thank you very much, uh, and thank you very much for the audience. I think uh, I want to start with giving a, 
a broad perspective of an overview of our country. Our country is 600,000 square kilometers, just almost. That's a big country and also small because 80% of our country is semi-arid and that is why we have 20% of our people. That is why we have 20% of our people. So a lot of our people, maybe 70-80%, are in that 20% which is, you can say, which is arable or can be farmed. Now, when you look at it in terms of water, water resources, this country can be divided into five drainage areas. A drainage is where all the, all the water drains to, maybe a river or something, or a lake. We have a Lake Victoria drainage basin. All the water in that area drains to Lake Victoria. We have an internal drainage system in Lake Tivari. All the water within Lake Tivari is internally drained. We have the Wasonyiro where Mr. our guest comes from, which is part, which is an international basin. Even Lake Victoria is an international basin. We have the Tana River Basin. All the water in that area drains to Tana River. And we have Adi River Basin. All the water, including where we are, drains to, to Adi River. Now, if you look at the, the distribution of water in our country, I think uh, the, the Wasonyiro Basin, which I think covers almost half of the country, has less than 10% of the water. The Lake Victoria Basin, which covers less than 10% or has more than 50% of the water. So you can see the distribution, the unequal distribution of the water resources. But that being the case, we also have, in terms of rainwater, more than 70% of this country has more than 300 millimeters of rain. And 300 millimeters of rain may not be a lot, but it's a lot if you are able to, to craft plants to use it, because you can collect it. There's a lot of evaporation in areas. So the question, so the question we're asking, with the five drainage areas, and, and you have mentioned them, we absolutely appreciate the geographics, but then how do we ensure that Kenya works for its citizens? How do, how do people get access to water? Is it a problem that will be perennial into 50, 60, 80 years of independence? What can we do now? It, it will not be because it is the responsibility of government to put in, plan, to put in strategies, uh, plans or programs to make sure that everybody has access to water. But that doesn't, uh, is not done uh, overnight or anything. So those plans also operate within a very enabling political environment. From, uh, from uh, I don't know, the, the late uh, 80s or something, I think we, had, had, we have been operating in a very difficult political environment. Mm -hmm. And that is why even the, the reforms, because we are... Appreciated, yes. yes. We, we saw, <laughs> we saw uh, these problems ourselves in water as, ma as long as 20 years ago. But, and we started reforming. Is on, there, was a ma there was a master yes, plan. Yes, there was a master plan in 1992. Plan. And perhaps... Is, 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 is it... Is it uh, can, can you... I don't know. Um, yeah. Can you answer that one for me? Um, is, is that master plan still in place? I didn't know about the 1992 one. I thought of the 1974, which said that in 2000, Kenyans will have access to water. Is this master plan, um, you know, uh, an exercise it in It was updated in 1992. One? But by that time, when we were updated, we had realized perhaps 2000 is not very far. <laughs> It was close, and it doesn't just require saying that you'll get water. It requires putting in programs and, and funding those programs. Thank exactly. you very much. We're also joined by Mr. Harun Washira. Welcome. Hi. So Washira, tell us about the Tana Water Services Board, and is it making a difference in the Tana, Tana, Tana River area? The, the most affected area within the Tana Water Services Board area is in the areas of Kitui and Mwingi, which are classified among the semi-arid areas. There are people who walk those 40, 30 kilometers to get water in that area. One of the things that has happened since the 2002, when this current government came to power, is, is availability of funding. The, I think water now is funded 10 times more than what it was funded before 2002. The second thing that has happened is adoption of, um, of, of the freedom to operate. So we can take the master plan, for example, update it and apply it in our own specific area, adopting specific technologies that we can use. And in our board area, for example, we have adopted the construction of those subservice dams so that you can make water available in the basins where people can just either scoop it in the sand or you can actually pump it to a tank and, and make available. We've done, uh, together with other partners, more than uh, 600 of those uh, subservice dams in just a few years. So then, then, then management approaches, when you give a group locally the capacity to manage their own water and then you, you, you support them uh, in, 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 in management and uh, with finances, then you accomplish a lot more. All the 
uh, about more than 150 boreholes that we have sunk since our boat came to being uh, three years ago are managed as one corporate entity, which means they do not, uh, they are not allowed to break down and they are providing water all the time and at a cheap and affordable price of about one shilling or two shillings instead of the typical 30 bob per. Yeah. I see what you mean. We have a question here. You have a question for uh, Bonagakubia? Like, Tell us my your name. name is Ada Wanyuike. I'm from Nakuru's Bukia constituency. Uh, well, I want to ask the director of uh, water services. You know there is two padding bills which are padding and uh, we have noted con to the conclusion wetlands bills and uh, water policies. We were in Bagadi. I was there, uh, I think uh, 2002. We were in Bagadi, but we didn't come to agree because pro the minister who was there, Mr. Ngeno, told us whether we like it or not, these policies will to go through. This is what he told us, Mr. Ngeno. So, uh, what's, your you see, what's your question, sir? What's your question? My, my question is, when, uh, when uh, do you think uh, these, these policies, because they are still pending in the in parliament and we have not discussed anything about it, when do you think that we shall come together and sit and change the policies? And also, because where I come from, my, I normally spend 100 shillings per day because I have for just fetching for water. Because if some people move from six, in the morning, they come back at seven. Okay. We'll take one more question before, yeah. Engineer, you can answer mm. this. Very quickly. Gentlemen, yeah. my name is Wabugu Mwai. My question is rather dialect. We know that uh, in Kenya we have, uh, we have, uh, we have oil. Uh -huh. We have an oil pipeline uh -huh. from uh, Mombasa to Kisumu. <laughs> I know what you're going to ask. Yes, and then the government is not doing something to supply water. It's, it's, the, it's, it's lack of willingness. We know very well that uh, uh, oil is being piped from Mombasa to Kisumu. And, uh, and we know very well that if we could, uh, if we could uh, get some piping to Wasingichu, which is on the highest ground on Kenya, then water can flow uh, at, uh, on, on gravity to other parts of the, of, of the country. So what is the Why problem? are they not doing that? We will answer that question right back. This is our tour show. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Hatua Show. The core issues we have been addressing today are around the lack of water supply in this country, its management, its conservation, and its sustainability, where we will seek to find out how we, as a nation, can provide solutions to this issue. And we were just, before we went into break, Engineer, you were to, to, to tell us more about the questions that were raised. What are the policies on water? Have they been passed? There's an oil pipeline. Why don't we have the same for water? We know the catchment areas. Why can we not service this nation? Thank you very much. The water policy was passed in 1999 by Parliament, and we followed it up with a legal framework in 2002. Minister Ngenyi actually signed the Water Act. Well, it was signed because the stakeholders don't have all, to always agree, I think, but things must move on. Now, the, we, whether, I know whether that they, whether, a, they, whether they are they're manageable or they are possible or not, we just agree to move yes. on. Yes, I also know that there is a, an, an arid and semi-arid lands policy in under discussion now, and also wetlands uh, policy under discussion. It takes long for these policies to evolve to, to, to that stakeholder consultation process because you want participation, you want involvement because that is the only way you can assure sustainability. I wish oil uh, can flow by gravity, but it can't, so we have to pump it. But remember. Out of our water resources, every person in this country is entitled to a natural water resource of 600 cubic meters, but you have developed less than 10, 20% of that. Now, you go to the lake to pump fine, but already, the, what you, what, where the water to feed the lake is coming from, you are not exploiting it. So basically, and that is where really you, you have a, a better chance of getting uh, more, more quality water and all that. Forget the fact that we have messed up our catchments. That also is its own complicated uh, system in a way. But we are now t coming to a level where we develop part of that 600 cubic meters so that it is serving everybody. Everybody. And when I mean everybody, is within practical terms. In 1981-90, there was an international water decade. 
It was said at that time that even if you bring in all the pipes, bring in everything, you still not meet the targets of that decade. Why? Because of lack of a management culture. This country, we don't have a management culture. I want to challenge everybody here who knows how, whether he, he or she pays the water bill. Or if you are living in your parents' home, do they pay the water bill? Do they pay the water bill? Because, of course. Yes, yes. Um, yes. yes. We pay. All right, all right, let's calm down. Yeah, calm down, calm down, calm down. I'm down with the mic here. <laughs> your name and what's your question? I'm Temesi, a media student at the University of Nairobi. Temesi, karibu sana Temesi. Now, the engineer has raised very, very pertinent issues, and I would like to respond to them. Now, one of the things that I think makes us go wrong as a country is that we are getting capital out of where it's not supposed to be. Now, we have to solve issues of uh, key resources in this country, one of them being water. We have, first of all, to alienate it from gross domestic product. You know, you are trying to get money out of something that is supposed to be gross well-being of the people. I think if every other organization that is doing business in this country, earning that kind of money, could be given a project to manage as part of their corporate social responsibility, that did not be their decision, but the decision of the government, like what Hugo Chavez is doing in Mexico with the oil companies. I'm telling you this country will have this resource and it will cut down on rural urban migration. For example, I come from the Lake region, where we are told 50% of the resources are, of the water resources are. But I, I first saw a water pipe, or what we call a tap, when I came to campus. So for me to go back to the village... <laughs> so know, that's, I, feel, that's, I don't know if it's government, I think it's leadership, I think it's members of parliament, I think we've got CDF now. Do you know what your CDF is all about? What's do you, the role do you of you NGOs in this ex country? Ex exactly. We're joined by Mr. Mugo. Mr. Mugo, you're Can you. with Let's Amin. give him a round of applause. Welcome, Penny. Tell us quickly some of the solutions that AMREF has been, been giving. Yeah, I think one thing we must understand is that uh, AMREF as a, an organization, non-government organization, does not have its own funds. What it does, actually, it uh, develops proposals which are aimed at fundraising. And then people like you come in and say, okay, we are going to fund that. So therefore... Who funds? Other people fund, but you use the citizen. Yeah, we, 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 what we do is that other people fund the, pro the, 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 the projects, and then we implement on behalf of those donors. And then, of course, we do it together with the community. Because the community actually are the driving force, as we have all observed here. You cannot do it for, for I mean, without uh, bringing in the community purely for sustainability and for commitment. I see what you mean. Before I ask my question, you had a, you had a question, sir, yes. Um, tell us your name, uh, perhaps what you do, and uh, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, My name is Rafael, Same and Rafael. basically my question was to one engineer, because basically he's talked about uh, the went and uh, formulated a national water policy. So my bone of contention is, they went and sat in the boardroom could you briefly elaborate on uh, what they discussed? Because, you know, some of us are just <laughs> kept in the dark. We're told the national water policy was formulated, but we don't know the contents. You see, that's the that's, that's thing where, the, in fact, I asked a question earlier. You, you, you realize now, I mean, there's been a lot of talk, uh, engineers said participation. And if you look at it critically, you and I must participate, because if we don't, this is what happens, is we go round and round in circles, so who is to blame? I asked a question, CDF, do you know how your CDF is being used? Do you know, like, we've got water boards, of which Mr. Oshida is one of them? How many know how the CDF is being used? How many know? How many know? Hands up. You oh, know. No, no. Mr. Why Mr. Oshida, help, help, help us on this one. You're, you're, very, you're very involved in the management of water resources. Um, uh, Mr. Mugo has told us that AMREF basically comes up with ideas or projects and they look for funding, and then ultimately my assumption would be is that then there has to be some sort of management. My question is this, is, there that, is, is that happening? And lastly, how long? Because I have a problem, and you'll forgive me, Bonamugo, how long, how long are we gonna have NGOs in the country sorting out our issues? 43 years, we do not have anyone who can crack it and move ahead? Incidentally, with all good intentions, in my own experience in the water sector, the majority of the work in the ground on, on water is not being done by NGOs. Mm. Communities are doing it on themselves. Many NGOs are briefcase people who sit in Nairobi and fundraise. Amref may be doing a good job, but that's not necessarily all true. The, the reform <laughs> program, the, the reform program in, in Kenya is that the water service boards in their region, in their catchment, are entitled to budget, 
to engage partners, to develop water programs with funding from both the government and other partners, and then commit those projects to communities to manage at the lowest level. What can level. I do? What can you do? You can join a water service uh, organization in your area. You can become a, what, a member of a water river users association. You can form a group nice. that develops a water scheme for your area. There is funding available from CDF. Nice. In my own constituency, we sat down with our own MP and agreed on the amount of money that will be put to water uh, at the same time as the other things are funded. So as a citizen, what you really need to get involved is at the ground level. Be part, Be of, part the of the organization. Okay, I'm going to I'm gonna have to catch you short, government. Mr. Short. Yeah, we, we need to... Um, I know you was just coming, but that's just our So Tell us your name, sir, and what, what your thoughts and perhaps solutions are, sir. My name is Peter Olonapa. I come from the rural part of Kajado. Welcome, uh, welcome. Rural village you. from Darugo. I think I appreciate what they are saying, in particular the director and, and our, our colleague from the Tana. But I would like to pose a challenge to the government also, because we are talking of participation. I mean, there is a lot of inability for the people to be able to implement uh, the part of the policies. I mean, there must be a political will from the government, whereby, I mean, they can allocate the funds. You know, the CDF is not enough. They have allocated the, the Youth Enterprise Fund. The women are just saying we need also the kitty, the one billion for the, why don't we have a kitty specifically for the water? There's a lady in blue, the, la the lady in blue, let me, the, she hasn't spoken. Let's, let's see how the lady's talk. My name is Abduba, I come from Marsevita. Yeah. I, I'd actually say it's a privilege for my friend there. They get water after eight, eight days. I don't remember seeing our tap running the last so many months in Marsabit. We don't get water. It's a is, huge is there problem. Is anything you and your family as residents of Marsabit can do to improve this? We cannot have this conversation in 20 years. In 10 years, in five years, we should not be talking about perennial lack of water. Maybe this what guy, can you maybe, do? Maybe he can answer because I think, we, you know, my name is Donald Gishane and I, I head operations at Living Water International. We are an NGO that works on the ground. Uh, I appreciate uh, everything that's been said. I think personally the government is doing something. Right now the government is doing something. A lot more can happen. I think the first problem like you raised earlier was it's our members of parliament. We have members of parliament who have funds that have been allocated to work on the ground. If you choose a member of parliament to sit yeah. or to represent you and he is not able to do that job, why would we keep coming back and voting that person back? You know, it's, definitely, it's definitely a leadership issue. The gentleman that spoke at the end there, he comes from Larry Jett. The first time I met him is because we were on the ground. If you ask him the water that he drinks, it's because of an NGO that went to the ground and did something, right? Now, if, if members of parliament are unable to actually do the implementation, there are people on the ground who can implement. All it is, all it is, is a, a problem of partnership. Find the people who can do the right job and get them on the ground. The funds are right. Let's give up. We're running short of time. So I want, I want us to wrap up with, with, with Fahad. Fahad, um, what is your Hatua? Yeah, I think uh, the NGOs, like uh, the gentlemen there, they can come to our place and partner with the community mm -hmm. and also the government. I think the government should, the CDF should use the CDF money to dig boreholes. I see what you mean. Even if it's expensive because the water table around our place is very low. I see what you mean. This is the Hatua show where you take Hatua on uh, better, bettering the community around you. Stay with us. Tunarudi Saizi. Hang on. Welcome back to the tour show. You know, it is clear that we can all play a role in ensuring that all parts of our country have the basic infrastructure that the people need. Let's meet at the crossroads. Chukua Hatua. It always starts with me and you. We must not waste the resources that we have because someone in another part of the country 
may be starving and may be very in dire need of it. We need to get more involved in what the government is doing, know about the policies we have, know how our tax money is being used, attend our local chief barazas if we live in those areas, CDF know how our CDF is being used, what the CDF committees and, and MPs are doing with the money that is allocated to If them. you have a problem in your community, get involved and rally people together like what Fahad is doing. Communities have built their own boreholes through collective uh, use of resources. And in this way, we can also discover leaders amongst ourselves. People can actually create change in their communities. And then after that, you lead your uh, fellow people to build your community. And that is why, um, and, and then why not run for parliament for your constituency after that? We need leaders. Not just guys like that, just leaders who are, who are there for positive change, or rather they are agents of positive change. That to me is my hatua. And that is mine. I will do something. What is your hatua? And that's our running question. What can you do? I'm Anne Taru Mumina. And I'm Jim Begatha. Thanks for watching today's show. We'll see you next week. Take care. Cheers. Zamani haki zetu hatukujua umefikia wakati wako nami kuchukua hatua haki na ukweli tumekuwa tukililia wazee kwa vijana chukua hatua